Prescott Music on the Trail Club. Donna here, Miss Donna at the State Capitol. Miss Jenny and I were talking about how disappointed we were that we didn't get to take the field trip. So even though we can't do it in person, here we are at the State Capitol. So this new Capitol was built to honor brave Nebraska veterans of World War I. It used some of the old material from the previous Capitol that we'll see when we get inside, black and white tiles. They built this new Capitol around the old Capitol. And our state capital is a sign of the character of the people, respect for our traditions and history, and belief that we are important and worthy. It's the nation's first what is called vernacular capital because it's a capital of the ordinary people, meaning that the overall scheme draws from the Great Plains. The architect was the very famous Bertram Grosvenor Goodhue, some of his architecture is found in Chicago and New York City. This capital took 10 years to build. It was completed in 1932. They took out no loans. They paid as they went. It was finished, including the landscaping in 1934. Nebraska was only 60 some years old. They paid $9.8 million for it, which today would be over $200 million. Now, I got permission to go past the close sign here, and we're going to come closer and see some of those things that represent the Oregon Trail experience. So, let's see if I can hop oh, the fence. We're going to pause while I get under the fence. Okay, so as we come up to the very front, do you see the gold shimmering? Do you see the tower at the top with the sower? That tower is 400 feet tall, can be seen 20 miles away, and is a symbol of things that man, humankind, first put on the prairie, like grain elevators and church steeples. The low flat part is a representation of the prairies, the rolling prairies. Around the outside, you see all sorts of names. Those are the 93 counties in Nebraska. And now going back to the sower, under him are thunderbirds, which in native culture brings farmers rain. It was put in place in 1930, and it also serves as a lightning rod. Now we get to go up the stairs and see the pioneers walking behind, actually beside their wagon and oxen, just like we talked about in club. Other things that we would have seen on the prairie, of course, are lots of bison. Let's see, I'll look at this one instead because of the way the lighting is. And around the bison, you see the native nations named. On this one we see Omaha, Oto, Pawnee, Arapaho, Kiowa, and this is a beautiful Navajo hymn. It says, in beauty I walk, with beauty before me I walk, with beauty behind me I walk, with beauty above and about me I walk. There's also a Sioux poem that says, arise with the dawn, bathe in the morning sun, sleep when the birds no longer fly, and awake when the first faint dawn appears. Certainly true to our pioneers going across the Oregon Trail. And one more poem from the Pawnee. As onward we wend, thinking of our children, many trails of buffalo we behold, many trails of life. Please come down this summer. This is your state capital. Enjoy. Now here we are in what is called the vestibule. It's the main entrance to the state capital. 
and to the right we find this beautiful painting. There's the wagon with the bonnet closed. These must have been later pioneers because they have horses and they're doing a little bit of camping out. These were painted in 1964 by James Penny. The dome above has mosaics of nature's gifts to man on the plains. Now we're going to head our way toward the rotunda, but on the way is the Nebraska Hall of Fame. Sculptures of very influential and helpful people in our history. There are also beautiful mosaics, like this one here, of a horrible snowstorm in 1888 in Nebraska. And notice there are little doorways for somebody to walk. This is one of the ways in which things are um, taken care of, and the chandeliers are brought down and the light bulbs changed. Let's go back and see the stairwell where you can head up. Well, if you are a worker, you can head up. Right here. Okay, now the Nebraska Hall of Fame. Be sure you come down and look at all of them. I'm going to highlight those that have an important influence on the Oregon Trail experience and us learning about the Oregon Trail experience. One of my favorites, Willa Cather. From her book, O Pioneers, it says, the history of every country begins in the heart of a man or a woman. You'll want to read her works as when you get a little bit older. As we head toward through the Hall of Fame, there are also beautiful mosaics on the floor. Some of mythology, some of um, natural history. First, we'll look at some more of the Nebraska Hall of Fame. So before you get to the big rotunda, we turn right. And as you walk down this one hallway, you can turn to the right, look to the right, and there are those repurposed tiles from the previous capital, the black and white tiles. The fountains were just recently completed. They had been planned all along. So you can come down during the summer and enjoy the fountains. One of the very important men in Nebraska's history is Standing Bear. He was a Ponca chief and a leader in Indian rights. In 1879, he went to court to argue that natives are persons under the law and won the case. Before then, natives were not considered humans. We owe a lot to Standing Bear. Another important man in Nebraska history is a native Red Cloud man, I'm sorry, man named Red Cloud from the Oglala Lakota. Let's try this again. Red Cloud, a native from the Oglala Lakota tribe. He was a warrior and a very brave, honest statesman. And the quote on his marker is, we don't ask for anything but what is right and just. 
he too was elected into the Nebraska Hall of Fame. And on this other side, again, we see another courtyard with the repurposed tiles. Now let's head to that famous rotunda. This is where you see important announcements made or celebrations. If you ever come down during the holiday season, this is where the Christmas tree is kept. The mosaic tiles on the floor represent before people ever were on the earth, prehistoric creatures. One of my favorite parts of our Nebraska State Capitol. When Nebraska was a vast sea, vast ocean. Also a lot of importance about the importance of water and agriculture. This is Mother Earth providing food and water. And then if you look straight up, you're looking 110 feet up to the dome. Now we're going to turn to the east with yet more Native American representation to honor those who were here before the Europeans came. This door weighs 600 pounds and has a special pulley system that makes it actually quite easy to open. There's the Thunderbird again, which brings water and corn for agriculture. See the sun and the stars. And to the left, we see an Indian mother with her baby. And she's standing on a turtle, which in native culture is a symbol of fertility, the ability to have children. And to the right, is a man. He's standing on an otter, which is a symbol of friendship and peace, and he's also holding a peace pipe. Now this door can be locked, and if you were here, somebody I'm sure would find the keyhole. But I think it's very clever. As we get closer and closer, we get to the sunflower, and there's the keyhole. When our state capitol was built, there were two houses, they call it, that um, put laws into, into effect. And now we are a unicameral, so this is a, an important meeting room. So we're going to turn around to the west side. It's called the West Chamber. And this is the unicameral, the legislature. I can't go this way without stopping and let's take a look at one of the paintings which is the importance of the arts music and art and architecture but we know that we've been in music in the trail so here we are at the west chamber the legislature if the doors were closed on the left there is a man holding a spade and a woman holding a jar of water tending to the tree of life. If the legislature were in session, we could go in and take a look. But at the top, there's a big wooden panel that goes all the way across, and it represents the settling of Nebraska. Everything from the discovery of the plains by Coronado to the exploration of Lewis and Clark, to the coming of the cattlemen and homesteaders.
at the top on the left of the voting board straight ahead to the left and to the right sculpted into that limestone are pioneer immigrant groups that followed the natives on the plains. And then the other important thing that we've talked about many times is the diversity of Nebraska and those who crossed the Oregon Trail. Look at the columns. They are purposely different colors. Brown, ivory, granite, because that is what they are wanting to represent, our diversity. There's one more important point from the rotunda. If you look past the railing, you can see a door that is actually a construction door. We'll come back another time and look at the Nebraska State Library, which is now a law library. It was originally designed to hold a copy of every book in Nebraska. Now it's a law library with about 150,000 volumes including a book from 1581. And in that is a beautiful painting by a Lincoln artist, Elizabeth Dolan, called The Spirit of the Prairie. That was installed in 1930 with a prairie woman, her children, the beautiful wind blowing against her skirt, and the family dog. Now we have one more stop. We get to go to the governor's office and find music on the trail, Oregon Trail items there. This is our final stop. This is the governor's office, Pete Ricketts. You've probably seen him quite frequently right now giving us updates about the safety and health of Nebraska. Anytime you're down at the Capitol, you can come in here and say hi. This is his reception room. And let's find some things that we would see on the Oregon Trail. This is a massive fireplace. It's much taller than I am. It was at one time a working fireplace. And as we come closer, we see beautiful sculptures of buffalo that we would see clearly on the Oregon Trail. And the symbolism of corn appears over and over and over again, doesn't it? Lastly, it's dark right now, but when you hear press conferences where the governor is giving us updates, this is the room that it comes from. And let's take a look at this beautiful just a trim around the governor's room. Do you see that those are corn? And the trim here. I encourage you to go online and look at all the symbolism in our beautiful state capital.